Hi, I'm Anita Kozan, and I'm from Minneapolis. And I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul. Welcome to Buy Cities, Buy Plus Cities, <laughs> a program for the Buy Plus community and our friends and allies. For those of you who are just joining us for the first time ever, we are the longest running show in the history of the world on bisexuality. So welcome to us. We've been off the air for three and a half years after having been on since September of 2002. And we're actually just delighted to be back on, aren't we, Dr. Kozan? Amen, little sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I am very happy to yeah, be having this yeah. show again. And what a great uh, pair of guests you have arranged for us this evening to uh, have this inaugural show of our second, the second coming of Bi Cities. This is the third generation now, so. Of, of, Bi of Bi Cities. Well, Bill Burleson was with us in the start. And then right. Eric and Robin were with us for a number of years. And, and now, now? Now we have Sally and Daniel and a whole bunch of other people, which we will acknowledge. So, All right. So Sally Corbett is our new director. That's right. Daniel Thomas Cummins is our new post-production editor. That's correct. And we have our phenomenal Tom Jones floor manager lighting expert, Paul Craven sound production, and Amelia... Demeling and Mark Demeling yes, on cameras good. across the generations here. And then we have newest, well, actually back from the past to the future to the present, future Lisa. That's right, future Lisa. And her daughter, Allison. Mulva Hill. Mulva Hill. Mulva Hill. Mulva Thank Hill. You, Allison Mulva I think Hill. we got it right. All right. She's, she's on our camera everybody. over there. So, so hey. we got it right. All Thank right. you. Okay, thanks. So, tell us about our guest tonight. You want me to do it? That was going to be your oh, job, but that okay, mine? that's okay. Oh but I will do it. This, we help each other out on this show. So, we are absolutely delighted here to have two people from one of the best bisexual organizations in the world with us tonight. So, take note of that. It's the Bisexual Organizing Project, and our two guests are Leah Yeomans, who is the chair of the Bisexual Organizing Project, as otherwise known as BOP. She's the chair of the board. And Shauna McNamara, who is uh, the creator and producer of Bi Lesk. And we're going to be talking about all of that in just a moment, but uh, we're just thrilled to have you. Thank you very much for Thanks. being on the show. Thanks for having Thank me. You. And yeah. please notice Leah's outfit. She's got the bi colors. Uh -huh. The bi flag is behind us over here. So yeah, we're, we rock. Bisexuals rock. Yeah, we Let's should be real. Do. We should. Do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is so exciting that we we didn't know if we'd ever get this show back on the air. So, so it's glad. been a long haul, and we couldn't have had two better guests than to have oh. folks from Bopping back to start us out. So, thank you so much. So honored. Thank you for thinking of us and oh. believing in us. Thank you. Well, we do believe in you. So, Shauna, as the uh, chair of the board, can you oh. just Tell us, I'm sorry, Shauna, it's Leah. <laughs> Your buys are confused. <laughs> oh. Oh, right? well, we Myth haven't changed number. a bit. Yeah, Getting those stereotypes some, in. some of the times, myths are true. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, Leah, God. thank you for yes. giving me the look. <laughs> <laughs> we caught that. Leah, you're the chair of the board. Could you just tell us a little bit about when Bob started, what it does, what you do? Yes. So um, Bob started with um, our conference that happens every year, our annual oh, conference right called Because, which started in 1992. And actually folks were around um, organizing, getting together in the 80s. Um, but Bob was actually um, became a 501c3 in 1999. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of my memory of when it kind of got off the ground as a as a nonprofit, yes, was in 1999. 1999, and because before then it was just because, wasn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this is a test. Okay. Uh oh. What is because the acronym for? Oh gosh. Yeah, we should all know <laughs> it, right? Whoever gets it. <laughs> Whoever gets it wins. Um, do you remember? No. Bisexual Empowerment, Empowerment Conference. Conference. A united supportive experience. Close oh. enough. Uh, That's there you go. All right. All right. See? All right. Yeah. So you, you say win. it slowly because we three are <laughs> yeah. buying you a drink. So, uh -huh. oh. yes. so say it again. <laughs> Bisexual. Okay. So because is um, a regional and probably international conference now that started in now. 1992, and it's an acronym for 
uh, Bisexual Empowerment Conference, a United Supportive Experience. Correct. All right. And why did they call it because? Just because. Uh, that was Right. <laughs> Just because. So, so you kind of developed out of that conference, which was because. Yes. And, you know, that's almost 20 years now that BOP has been in, in existence. What have you done along the way, and where are you today? And tell me what you're doing in the bike community. Um, well, we're doing a lot. Um, first of all, this weekend um, is our board retreat. So mm -hmm. we have um, five new board members that have joined us in um, October at our Because Conference. We had our annual meeting right. and our elections to our board. So we're really excited. This weekend we're going to be doing our governance training and um, we're going to be planning out this year. Okay. Um, but other than doing Because, which is really our flagship program that happens each year, um, we also have our Bi Discussion Group, and that started out as Chick Chat or Bi Salon. Okay. And now it's called the Bi Plus Discussion Group. Bi Plus, good. Mm -hmm. um, our former board member, Carrie Crawford, um, she runs our Bi Book Club at the Quatrefoil Library. Um, I started um, a walking club for Bi Health Month, which happens in March, but we walk all year round. <laughs> And um, we have a lot of um, community gatherings. Um, we just started a board game night that happens at the libraries. Um, Different libraries or Quatrefoil? Um, we've been at the Minneapolis Public Library. Okay. Yeah, we just had one on the 4th, and 19 people showed up. Wonderful. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we still do our Buy Essentials program where we go out into the community or to businesses and do a presentation on bisexuals and the needs of our community to help um, engage um, non-monosexuals on how to better treat bisexuals in the workplace and the community. And that's um, something that we have been partnering with with Minneapolis Public Libraries. Oh, well, that's fabulous. So they actually participate in the Bi Essentials? Yep, they asked us to present that. Oh my goodness mm -hmm. sake. And now they want us to um, engage more with them. And so this is um, a program that we want to get out more often. We also um, have done meetups um, where we did pansexual or pancakes for pansexuals. We've done a uh, Meetup where we've had donuts and that one was popular, very popular. <laughs> yeah. Donuts. Did you, you paint? You know the the frosting. Is it bi colors? No, or? we didn't. <laughs> I thought maybe ten people would show up, and like there was sixty people. So who knew bisexuals love donuts? Hey, well, <laughs> not surprised. Right. That's a secret. <laughs> That's now out. Um, so um, there are a lot of different ways that. Um, we're also connecting with other groups around the country. There's um, six 501c3 um, by organizations that, that I know of, and um, we partner with at least three of them regularly, um, doing surveys and reports and writing letters to people and just trying to get the word out and advocate for our community. And I think at one time, Bob was pretty involved, too, in the uh, White House gatherings. Yes. Uh, yes, we said a lot about before we have. Yep. Back in the days when we had welcoming presidents. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So oh. Hopefully that will happen again. Yeah, it yeah. will happen again. We um, are sending um, some board members to the Creating Change Conference in January. Wonderful. They'll be in and Detroit. And where is that? In Detroit. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so we're excited about that. We'll be partnering with some other groups there. And probably doing our bi-essentials program. Now the Creating Change Conference is GLBTQ plus? Yes. Okay. So are there other organizations from the Twin Cities going as well? I'm not sure. I'm not sure who will be there, but it's I'm actually sure people from all over the country. Uh -huh. Yeah, all over. Well, and that's it's one wonderful. of the largest uh, queer conferences basically in the nation, I believe. Mm -hmm. And by essentials that's basically by 101, right? It's just yes. all about the bi community and who we are and what we do. And yep, and it takes a lot of data from different surveys and um, talks about facts and needs. And as a matter of fact, last year, um, one of our board members, Jessie Miller, she um, put out a local survey to our community to find out how BOP can better serve our community. So we'll be using that survey information during our retreat this weekend so we can get out really good programming to our community. 
We hadn't talked about this before we went on the air, but are there some facts that, you know, come to your mind about the bi community that maybe you present in Bi Essentials? Because I, you know, in the past, I mean, there are health variables and there are poverty variables mm -hmm. and there are things. Um, yes, and those are still true. Um, we're finding that bisexuals um, or non-monosexuals are um, suffering from um, higher rates of depression and suicide and um, health problems and yeah compared to not just heterosexuals but also um, gay and lesbian communities <coughs> it's significantly um, higher rates of mental health uh, issues mm -hmm. yeah and as someone who's a, a bipsychologist I like to inject that this is not because we're inherently defective no this is because of the marginalization even that we have within the queer community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So marginalization is bad. Minority stress yeah. adversely affects people. And that's a robust finding that we have across the board from marginalized groups, whether it's people with disabilities, people of color. And sadly, in the bi community, it's really, really unfortunate that we have a lot of these health and mental health issues. That yeah. Well, it's hard. You can't really fit in, there's, there's a lot of communities that you kind of have to be a chameleon with, like the straight community doesn't fully support you, but the queer community as well, almost mm -hmm. like in my experience, worse than the queer community, unfortunately. But yeah, that's, that's tough on individuals' mental health. I think it's, it seems to me that it's better than it was, but that whole thing of, oh, you know, you're bisexual, you know, and then all the myths start creeping yeah. into their minds. But um, I think more and more people are hopefully accepting of us. But just hearing about that in terms of bi plus mental health, that also uh, people who identify as somewhere in the trans spectrum, mm -hmm. that they also yep. have more difficulties with mental oh, health yeah. issues yep. because of the marginalization that they experience. And then as you said, you know, add in their ethnicity, their uh, uh, other aspects about their ability, and all kinds of reasons not to like us. I love that you say that because one thing that we came up, I think it was two years ago at our retreat, we came up with the phrase that my bisexuality is intersectional or it's bullshit. Can I, can I say that here? Right. <laughs> I didn't even think, I just said it. Because it's so important to consider, you know, the different intersections of bisexuality because there, there is definitely different versions of oppression within even our community course, alone. Yeah. And I love that you acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And that's important, I think. I mean, that's just something that we're learning more and more about in, in terms of cultural studies anyway. So, yeah, thank you. Intersectionality. Mm -hmm. Leah, is there anything else that you want to share about BOP that's just, you know, wanting to come out? And yes, um, so we have some other programs um, that we have um, been working on over the years. We have um, a Bi Plus POC group, a people of color group that happens quarterly, which is a closed group, and um, we have a paid facilitator that puts that on for us, and um, it's a great way for um, people who are um, in those other, um, like you said, that are more marginalized, that have a community space that's closed just for them um, to get together and have community. And then um, three years ago, we started um, a fundraiser program called Bilask, which has been phenomenal. That might be a good segue into uh -huh. what Shauna, the creator and producer of Bilask. Bilask. So tell us about your baby here. What? Oh my gosh, thank you. It is definitely my baby. So the reason why it was created is I was on the BOP board uh -huh. and we were hearing feedback from the community that they wanted more spaces to celebrate, safe spaces to celebrate. So um, I was on the social justice team and I was trying to hit two birds with one stone because mm -hmm. we were trying to um, educate the community while also entertain them. And so that's kind of how Byless came. I'm a performer, so I was like, what better way to connect with my local non-monosexual, um, the artists that I normally perform mm -hmm. with, and create this safe space that features inclusive art. Um, to, I thought it was a great way to combat bi-erasure and biphobia. Yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. So I put this together and just didn't know what I was doing. Um, it was pretty stressful. Didn't didn't know if any tickets would be sold, and the night came, um, sold out. Wonderful. Sold out. Yeah. <laughs> sold out. The community loved it. Um, but what I didn't think was going to happen that happened was um, the artists who were a part of it came up to me, almost every single one individually, thanking me because they had never been a part of a show where they were not the minority, like the they weren't like the token, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because everyone was non-monosexual. So I didn't realize it was going to have such an impact on the artist. But so I was getting thanks on both ends. Like it was really stressful. I was putting in so much time, but it was, it, it was, the intent was to create that safe space to celebrate. And it did that and more. So. Wow. Um, I just, I'm so excited to hear about it. <laughs> So you have already successfully hosted two, two. events, yep. and now you're in the process yes. of... Yes, so the first one was Biolesque Gender Anarchy, where we featured mostly um, transgender and non-binary non-monosexuals. And the second one was under our umbrella, because the bisexual umbrella. We wanted to um, educate the community that there are many, many different orientations under bisexual, the bisexual umbrella, like mm -hmm. pansexual and fluid and so on and so forth. And then this year, I'm so excited, I haven't told anyone yet. Um, oh, you're the, the first to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Bilesk Unicorns Unite. So it's unicorn themed and it's going to be so much fun. Wow. That's lovely. All right. Yeah. And you have changed the venue. We did, we did. So it started at Lush because we wanted to make sure it was in a queer space and felt safe for the majority of the community. Um, it sold out both times, so we had to find a bigger space. And now it is at the Poor House in downtown Minneapolis. And tell us the date and time and how people can Absolutely. access it. So the date is January 26th at 7 p.m. Okay, that's and 2019, just... 2019, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, it's a Which Saturday, is a Saturday. Yep. 7 p.m., and you can access tickets at the Poor House website. And it's and, P -O -U -R and House. Yep. And through Bob, we'll have it listed on our Facebook site and our meetup site and our um, website. Yeah, so there'll be a Facebook event, meetups, all, all of that. So you'll be able to find it. Type in Bylask in Facebook, Unicorns United will pop up. Cool. You know, when you were just talking about Bylask and the impact that it had on performers, I was reminded to going to the first Because Conference and what a, it was a spiritual experience yes. almost, walking into a buy space. I didn't have to back up the train to tell anybody about, you know, or educate people. It was just for us and it was so powerful. And it's, that was a safe place and an educational place, mm -hmm. but now to have celebration. Yeah. You know, the next mm -hmm. generation, yeah. is, it's exciting. It's, it's so fun. And I think a reason why it's so successful as well is I want any non-monosexual to walk in and feel like they see themselves on stage, feel like they're represented. So I am very, very mindful of trying to feature as many different types of non-monosexuals. Obviously, I can't do everyone. That would be impossible. <laughs> but I do my best to keep yeah. it really diverse in multiple different areas if it's, you know, body type or... Uh, gender or uh, you know so, Racial, so many different yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, people of color. Age. Age? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, and also acts. I mean, it's, it's definitely burlesque centered, but there's a lot of variety acts. Lyra artists, pole artists, singers. It's, it's a really great time to see the local art in our community and the local leaders as well. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a very high probability, I think, <laughs> that there's going to be a very special guest oh. who will be there. Point and, you know, I wonder who that might be. <laughs> who, who could that who be? Could that be? <laughs> there's you actually know. two people in this room that could be on that stage. Oh my oh. gosh, oh. yes. Two people by. I know. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so our own Dr. Anita Kozan may very well be a special guest. And and I bet but now you're, you're committed thinking, to her, so I, you know, see yeah. what happens when you come on the show. <laughs> I, see, I see. As a performer, I'm like, oh, don't, you know, 
don't work that on her that she feels forced to accept me well, because I haven't auditioned yet. That <laughs> no, she said I had to audition. You know, I had well, to send her a so, tape or something, just like everybody else I'm does. I'm part of the community. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, and nobody does the Minnesota Rouser better than. I'm, and I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you're not just so do, you know that. Okay. You know? Even though no. the Gophers are, you know, but I really do. having a I great do. year. There are lady are. Gophers yes. here. Yes, but so. uh, I just. It's, it's astounding, and, and it is like I have to get on Facebook. Now I really, really have to get on Facebook. I have just, it's like too much. Someone with ADD, I, I just, it's too much to handle, all that decision-making. and It's a lot. <laughs> when you have ADD, it's a lot. I feel that so hard. <laughs> so, but it is, I mean, to, to bring this group together, on you know as a group of performers i mean just the way you're talking about it because i thought of all the different places that i have performed and i've performed with other by people i guess once with like brent fuquay mm -hmm. and uh uh lori dockin who is uh i believe a lesbian that they're mm -hmm. you know that she was a guest on that night but you know to have something that is focused Mm -hmm. on the um, non, I like the way you say it, I mean it's non-monosexual yeah. mm -hmm. performers. Trying to keep it that's inclusive great. because yeah. that's bisexuality is non-monosexuals, all non-monosexuals. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I try to be very clear so people don't feel like they don't belong. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very, very particular on that. Um, but I, I feel like I should be sitting in this chair differently. You know, they say bisexuals sit a certain way. Oh, so she's going <laughs> to... I feel like that needs... Yes, no, we were talking about doing the bi spread. Bi spread, that's exactly... How do I look? Do I look like a bisexual? Yes, yes. Everyone? Yes, of course. No. <laughs> no, but I, I'm very excited. I'll be performing in the show as well. It's the first time I'm going to be in it, because uh, the first year I wanted... I, I just wasn't ready for that yet. <laughs> I was busy producing it. So big role. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And if you want to be involved, we um, are looking for volunteers, donations, sponsors. Um, if you want to like help with the door or help with any, any form, you know, feel free to reach out to Leah at Bisexual Organizing Project or my information will be like on the Facebook event as well and probably on the Poor House website. So, and if, if you're you part of donuts, you're really going to be a big get, right? Yeah, so bring donuts. Bring That'll be donuts. a hit. The yeah, only yeah. requirement is that you're, you identify as non-monosexual identity. So to be that's on the show. To, to be involved in the show. Okay. Um, because the whole um, point of the show is to feature local non-monosexual individuals <clears throat> and artists. So if you're non-monosexual and want to be involved, I would love to. The know. audience can be anyone. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. The yes. audience is... In Anyone Everyone, can come. Anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're excited to have you. And before we got on the show here today, tonight, we talked about all the different words for mm -hmm. bisexuality. Yes. And we talked about how when we first started, yeah. we talked about bi cities as being bi for and about the bisexual community and our friends and allies. And now we're talking about the bi plus community. But what are some of the names? You know, time has marched on and people yes. have different ways that they call themselves and names that they mm -hmm. call themselves. So what, what are some of the ways that people identify now? I, okay, sorry, I, was, I can just say my, my specific ones. I have like four that I go by. Oh, so right. I go mainly by bisexual, um, but I can also go by pansexual, fluid, queer. So those are just the ones that I go by, but I'll let Leah take over on those. <laughs> so I go by bi, pansexual. Omnisexual is kind of the same word as pansexual, uh -huh. it's just different. Um, and then um, also um, queer. Those are the words that I've mm -hmm. used, but mainly just bisexual. Um, but a lot of people are using pansexual, and um, people are using fluid, um, queer, and some people are just using unlabeled terms. And then there's other terms like polysexual, bicurious, um, two spirit, but that only belongs to Native Americans. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, bi romantic, hetero flexible. Oh, there's so many different. Mm -hmm. There's it's a huge. If you look up online, I don't know if they have this and if they're going to show it, but there's this umbrella that says bisexual or bisexuality, and underneath it has all the different 
um, variations of bisexuality, which are some that we've talked about, but there's, there's so many. Um, it could also be labeled non-monosexual as well. It's the same thing. Um, but that's a really um, educational visual that I like to teach with personally. And I think how some of this evolved is that there's some objection to the term bisexuality because of it referencing two or right. there's only two different genders that we might be attracted to. Mm -hmm. So the other more inclusive words are that we can be attracted to more, more than one gender. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I just want to, I want you to repeat the, the dates. The Absolutely. Date. One more time, for sure, because we're going to have to wrap up here in a few seconds. So Wonderful. So, uh, Bialesque Unicorns Unite will be at the Poor House in downtown Minneapolis on January 26, 7 p.m. Uh, if you want to see inclusive art that features many different types of people, it's actually been considered one of the most inclusive shows in the city. So, right. come, come celebrate with us. It's a wonderful thing to do on a winter night in Minnesota. It Absolutely. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine it, up to 400 bisexual people together oh partying. My gosh. Or, no, that's so right. That you don't have to be. You don't have to be. You don't have to be one of us to attend. But just to be on the show. over up to 400 people celebrating. Mm -hmm. If we get yeah. 400, hallelujah. <laughs> Let's oh. do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know, <laughs> if we imagine, it'll be they our will New Year's celebration. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, yes. one of the myths of the bi community is that we were considered the smaller of all the GLBT. And we were the biggest. And we're, and we're the, the largest. Biggest. Yeah. We're, by we're, far. We're not the unicorns, we're the horses. Right. As Lisa cats. Diamond is fond of saying. Well, so. I think that uh, we should thank our guests here. and Thank uh, our guests and our crew. Yes. Wow. What yeah. a great crew. Yeah. Thank you for being with us again and for our third generation. Third generation of by cities so any parting thoughts before we go with our signature goodbye thank you so much for inviting us we're so happy to be here and talk about bop and bylesque oh my gosh it's been an absolute pleasure and i cannot wait to perform with you on stage oh, well, <laughs> and for all of you to come see it <laughs> i can't wait either <laughs> All no, right. This so. is wonderful. And, and thank you for the work that you're doing in the bi community. Mm. It's so wonderful that younger folks are picking up the ball and, and running. And that's thank all you for calling involved. me younger folks. <laughs> 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 Listen, I went into my waiting room today, and there was a 77 year old woman who said, Hi, young thing. And I'll, all right. I <laughs> made my day. <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> please join us in our signature goodbye. And we're going to look at the camera. All right, right there. Bye, Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>